I bought a new toy. It was very cheap on AliExpress, including all the taxes and the postage. I think it was like 17 quid or something. And I thought, why not? It was interesting. So let's have a look. It is a two channel oscilloscope. What do you think the chances are of this actually working? Shall we see what happens? Is the battery liable to be charged? That's the first question. I'm guessing that's the power button. Oh. That's upside down. How does this work? Alright. Well, we do seem to have an oscilloscope and we do have a screen that's working, which is a vast improvement over the last one I bought. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll set up the oscilloscope and the signal generator so that we can see whether or not this works. So I've stuck in a one kilohertz signal, um, a square wave on the yellow line and uh, 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 obviously a sine wave on the on the blue line. They're the opposite way around than they are on the other scope and I can't be bothered to change it. Um, and obviously the signal looks pretty good. Um, I can't complain at all about that. Um, we can see we can see from the the tracking information that it's got the frequency it guessed the frequency right at one kilohertz it's got the duty cycle about right 50 percent um, the voltages are again about right um, because it's a five volt signal coming out of the signal generator um, yeah that's at a one kilohertz signal, that's not bad at all. So this is at 10 kilohertz. We should be able to change the time base. There we go. And again, you can see that's that's pretty good signal for twenty quid that you can carry in your pocket. Did I tell you my desktop uh, oscilloscope cost me three hundred and fifty quid? So we're now running at a hundred kilohertz, which is pretty good. Okay, and we can uh, just change that a bit. Uh, it's a bit wiggly, uh, but it is very acceptable on a on a on a handheld. I would have said, let's try a Meg. So we can start seeing on the on the desktop oscilloscope that the the square waves starting to struggle a little bit. Um, I suspect that might be my signal generator. Um, rather than the oscilloscope itself. Let's have a look at the signal on here. It's starting to get a bit wavy as we're entering the, 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 the sample rate of the, uh, the, little, the little handheld oscilloscope. Um, but honestly, that's, that's, that's more than acceptable. So we can see at, uh, at 10 meg, uh, the signal generator has just given up entirely on the square wave uh, and, and he's, ju he's just doing a sine wave now. Which, uh, to be honest, I, he's, he's not unexpected given that the signal gener generator is only supposed to go up to 2 meg. Um, and we've hit the 
maximum resolution on the on the oscilloscope uh, at 50 nanoseconds. Still looks pretty good. So let's drop it down to 2 megahertz, which is where the signal generator basically tops out or should top out. So here we can see that the signal generator is now doing, it's still doing a 10, 10 meg um, sine wave on the blue line and this, the square wave, this is at 2 megahertz, um, is, is, is still square but a little bit shaky. But it's obviously shaky on the desktop oscilloscope as well as the, uh, the the handheld oscilloscope honestly I'm quite impressed with this this, this handheld oscilloscope um, I think that works remarkably well for such a small package at such a cheap price it will need a case to to protect it and look look what I've just discovered oh yeah baby from a usability point of view, being able to see a 10 megahertz signal, or at least get the idea that a 10 megahertz signal is, is present somewhere, is is useful from a sort of hobby electronics point of view, particularly if you're going to be messing around with old computers, which typically have clocks between like a megahertz and, and, and 10 megahertz. So, yeah, I'm... I'm sold on this. No, we're done.